Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for joining Adobe Live. I am your host, Justine Mangum Kirkman. I am also um, an owner and an artist of Winnie Weston. I'm so happy to be here. Come into the chat, talk to us. Hi, everyone. Hi, Steve. Hello. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hello, hello. I have a special guest today. I'm so excited. But before that, we have to get to the business first. Um, so thank you for joining Adobe Live. Um, join the Adobe Live community and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on at Adobe Live on Instagram for the latest streams and updates and more. Uh, so we got all of that good stuff out of the way. We have even more good stuff. We are here with a special guest. We're here with Stevie Ray Drawn. Hi, Stevie. How are you? Hello, Justine. And hello, everyone in chat. New faces and familiar faces. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me today. Yes, of course. Tell us like more about you. Show us your art, what you've done. Um, and just let us know what you're going to do today. Absolutely. So um, I'm Stevie Raydron. I am a digital illustrator and um, a storyteller. The art that I do, as you can see, is uh, imaginative realism, um, basically kind of with a little bit of a focus on maybe like retro 90s vibes and a little bit of a focus on um, like dreamy romantic kind of things. Um, yeah. Uh, I have actually a history in, in the long years in the past, I actually used to stream on the Adobe Twitch channel, um, oh, along cool. with some, some of the people you might know, like Cody Bear and Sam Peterson, who are in the yes. chat. Yes. Hi, um, Sam. Hi, Cody. <laughs> actually, this, this, um, picture down here in the bottom right corner, uh, I actually did that back on the Adobe Twitch channel back in the day, so... That's my, oh. my little claim to fame. <laughs> I love oh. that. I love that. The one other important thing about me is that I work in the game industry and in the publishing industry. So um, I work on mobile games and I work on book covers for like indie authors. So I love that. That's so exciting. I'll definitely be asking you more about that because I'm so curious about just the process of creating book covers and working with um, just the, the, art, the authors in that sense. So that's so Absolutely. cool. Oh my gosh. So what are you doing today for us? Okay. So today um, I'll change over and show you in just a second, but let me explain. Um, I am going to take my oldest digital painting that I ever have made. Um, actually, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up, but I'm not going to reveal it just yet. So, Great. Perfect. Because, we would have surprised. <laughs> yeah, you've seen my new art and I want you to see my old art. This digital painting I made in 2009. Um, it was the first digital portrait I ever did. I did it in Photoshop. I think I did it in Photoshop CS5. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so a long time ago. And, um, and I just wanted to also invite anyone who's here and watching if you have an old piece that you would like to also paint over, I'll share some of my thought process as I go. And I would love to see what uh, what you come up with. So, however. Oh, perfect. Justine, are you ready to see this? I am. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let me yes. reveal the old art. Okay. Here, here she is. The first digital portrait wow, I ever did. Ever. <laughs> This mm -hmm. is like an Adobe yeah. Live exclusive. I feel like it, like <laughs> people are we're getting like the OG CV Ray drawn. Like what the heck? <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So, but let me just I'm just gonna jump in and start noodling because I wanna yeah, I wanna do I wanna improve this um this poor lady. So I have a plan, and my plan is I'm going to build on the canvas of what I've made before. So I'm gonna take, I put everything, actually, I'll show you real quick. I have everything very, I mean, my layer organization was impeccable back in the day. I'm like, everything uh -huh. is split onto, oh, look, I have a secret color palette there. Oh, I love that. <laughs> everything I is love split it. up. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. <laughs> so it can just like reduce the opacity of it. And then I can go in and I can make a new sketch layer. Um, wow. Normally I would name my layers. I highly encourage everyone to name your layers, but my keyboard is inaccessible right now. So we won't be naming the layer. <laughs> ah, I was going to ask you, uh, what type of um, artists are you? I'm the type where I don't lay, I don't um, name my layers. So you are the type where you do name them. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I probably would be more like you, honestly. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh my gosh. That it's so it's funny. overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So um, this character was originally referenced based on um, the actress Laura Fraser. Um, mm, okay. I do, I do have some references of her off on the other screen. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm superhuman and I'm pulling this out of my imagination. I am not. <laughs> um, but I do have the same reference that I used when I was originally starting. Um, oh, something wow. that something that I want is I want to reduce even further the opacity for the initial sketch um, because I want to be able to um, not be too influenced by what I have, but I am going to pull it back in later. Right. Um, oh, hello, Nerve Pixel. I noticed a hello in chat. <laughs> I love it. Hello, everyone in the chat. Oh, look, Sam said, team, name your layers. OK, Sam, I'll start naming mine, too. I'm going to join on that bandwagon. Listen, sure. <laughs> listen, if you do control shift N to make a new mm. layer, it automatically puts your cursor in the name box. So all Perfect. you have to do is type control shift N and, and then it. and then literally just type the name. Wow. So, so I really have no excuse to be honest. Right? None, none, none whatsoever. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Hello everyone in the chat. We're here with Stevie um, and she's going to get started on what she's working on. I know I'm, I'm fiddling with my brush here. I probably shouldn't. I think I'll just, uh, we'll just work with what we've got. Um, but basically I, I had a pretty decent structure on this original drawing. Um, but some of the things that I find that I struggled with and lots of other people struggle with when they're first starting is, um, is it's the range of values. Um, mm -hmm. it's really, it's really easy to make things kind of flatter than you think they are. You're afraid of darks. You're afraid of lights. Right. You're just, a, you're just it's just too, it's all a little too strong for you. And so you don't, you don't make strong statements in your work, you know? Right. Gotcha. Yeah. I totally understand that. So, um, now when you are, um, so you're taking, um, your first piece of art that you've created on, on, uh, as far as digital art. Yes. Um, and so what are some different things you're doing now than what you did before? I, it took me years to, to actually learn that I needed drawings. Um, so even just this step I'm starting with right now of having a drawing to begin mm -hmm. with is a major, major difference for me. And it's silly because I always drew in graphite when, well, I guess not necessarily always graphite, but I drew <laughs> on paper before I got digital tools. Right. So, it's so funny to me that I just went straight into painting without acknowledging the importance that drawing had prior to that. Right. Um, the, the basic step of drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, many years into being a professional artist, I, I hit like a block in my skills. Um, and the only thing that helped was it was, I, it's embarrassing to say, but it was starting to do drawings. Um, <laughs> I so, and the, the more detailed I do my drawing, the more high quality the final product is, I have discovered. So, um, I agree. It's magical. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, Sam said, Ha, I've had to learn that lesson multiple times through the years. A fleshed out line drawing makes the painting much easier. Yep, that's mm -hmm. very true. 
Very true. Exactly. <laughs> Sam knows. Sam, Sam has Sam has shed the tears. He is he's he's put in the the sweat, you know, he knows the pain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's seen it all, been through it all. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to watch Sam grow as an artist. Um, yeah. If any of you haven't had a chance to watch him stream, you need to. He is ASAP. He's a wizard. Yes, and a great teacher for sure. Yes, absolutely. So many tears. <laughs> uh, so this particular reference that I have is actually um, from the movie A Knight's Tale. Um, Laura Laura Fraser plays a blacksmith. Gotcha. Um, and she's so angry. This is a scene where he, um, the main character, can he can't afford a blacksmith. And everyone's like, well, you should go talk to the one woman blacksmith because, you know, they're all, you know, they don't like women blacksmiths or whatever. It's the right. medieval times. Of course. Um, and she's like, oh, I won't work with you. And he literally says, oh, all the other guys said I was uh, stupid to try and talk to you. And 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 he basically says, he implies that everyone said she couldn't do it. And she gets uh, so mad that she's like, I'll do it. Right. She's like, actually, <laughs> matter of fact, I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's, my question. that's my question for you, uh, Stevie. I know um, a lot of artists, we're definitely influenced by what we watch, what we listen to, what we read. Um, so are you that type of artist where you are influenced by television shows, movies, things like that? Oh, five million percent. <laughs> I am so... I, I love movies so much um, and Same. I love, yeah, I love like escapism <laughs> and whatever. And I, yeah, I want to make my own worlds is basically kind of my motivation. It's like, I want to tell these stories. And this character was like, uh, I wanted to make a fantasy story with a character that I thought was more interesting than the ones in the books that I had been reading. Right. And, uh, and so I, I really, um, I got all carried away and I made this whole character and this whole world and, um, and you know, it's been a endless fuel for me. <laughs> yes. No, I, I love that. I'm just like that too. I will get so influenced by what I watch and I'm like you where I'll see a character and I'll want to recreate in my world, how I view the character. So this is you, uh, recreating how you view that character as well. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of choices do you make as far as um, just working and what you're working in? What what choices do you make uh, to just make it your own? That's one of the biggest challenges I find, like especially mm -hmm. when you're using some reference or something, if you're trying to capture a real likeness or you're trying to make like, like a lot of us painters get really caught up, uh, realism painters get caught up on um, accurate anatomy, accurate perspective, accurate right. like light and color. And um, it kind of is a trap. It kind of tricks us into copying more than making something our own. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I'm always kind of having to say like, okay, what do I like versus what it's complicated because sometimes what I like is what looks like the reference. I'm like, I have this so ingrained desire to make it like the reference, right. but I have to, I have to really pull away from that and be like, what is fun? Like, what is, what is yes. good? Like if I didn't look at the reference and I just looked at the finished piece, would I care that it wasn't accurate? Probably not. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I really have to push push myself to spend lots of time looking at the reference, but also spend lots of time only looking at what I'm working on. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always think with art, you know, having fun is the, the best thing to do um, so that you can still have that childlike wonder when when you're creating it. Hey, to Wade, thank you for joining. Hello, hello. Hello, Gareth. Oh, thank you for Wade. joining. Hello. Hello, oh. thank you for joining. We are here with the great, great Stevie. 
And she just revealed. Thank you, Justine. <laughs> it is true. And she just revealed her very first digital art piece of art. And now she is recreating it. So we are in that journey with her. Hopefully wow. there won't be too many tears this time. <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> Something I really like in the reference in this, this particular actress's face is she has yeah. a kind of a pouty musculature around her lips. Um, yeah. There's like some shadows around the corners. So that's something I'm going to kind of look at the reference and try to capture. You'll see some like weird looking lines on my art as I'm going. But because it's a painting, I'm really giving myself guidelines for where light and shadow will be. I love that. Now, how um, just for for some people who are joining in who may not understand uh, the creation of, of creating light and shadows, how do you determine that? Um, when drawing? Um, I think basically I just look at the everything in a form, everything we see in real life is a combination of soft edges and hard edges. And mm -hmm. I'm looking for the places where there's defined edges that are hard or more hard. They don't have to be perfectly like perfectly defined, but like a lot of us have a little dimple under our lip and it tends to create a, a crease in the shadow there and that's what this is so i'm making a note of this but then also there's like a kind of a more soft shape that spreads out from the sides of the muscles that go around the edge of your mouth mm -hmm. um and so this is sort of like it's an earmark for myself and i'll show you when we get there how i actually um how i actually use it perfect i'm excited Wow. Oh, I have a fancy eraser on, which is not the correct eraser. Let's fix that. I made I a, a scattering <laughs> eraser and that was not appropriate for this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love how there are so many ways you can um, just use the different brushes and, and erasers and really uh, honestly make them or confirm, conform them into what you need them to be. That's like the great thing about Adobe, I think. Oh, and learning how to make custom brushes um, is just a superpower. It will yes. just, I think, I think custom brushes and using the color adjustment tools are the two things in Photoshop that, that no other software has been able to really replicate. I agree. I agree. Thank you, Robert. Yes, definitely um, check later for the replay of the stream to see what Stevie's uh, creation will look like at the end. I think her nose is a little too long. I'm going to merge my two working layers together. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to do that. I'll take a, I'll do a sketch. And then once I'm done with that sketch, I'll reduce the opacity of it. Mm -hmm. And then I will make another one on top of it. And I will then reduce the opacity of that. And I just keep merging them and merging them. And it creates like a, silhouette shadowy kind of effect which is really nice oh i love that so i also that don't want to spend i don't want to spend too much on the drawing today um so i'm gonna i'm gonna give myself a earmark for what i want to do with the hair and mm -hmm. i'm gonna give myself like a an idea of what i'm gonna do with the clothes one of the shortcomings that i had in <laughs> my original piece um, is the fact that I literally didn't, I just used a random brush and I like implied that she was wearing some sort of bodice. I didn't know <laughs> anything about designing costumes or drawing clothes. And I was just so focused on trying to get her facial features like pixel right. perfect mm -hmm. that I just, I just ignored it basically. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it, it looks like you plan for her to, to be wearing a bodice. So I'm excited to see what you'll do, what you'll do this go around having really planned it and, you know, really having had <laughs> how many years has it been? 14 years to right. calculate what I would do differently. <laughs> right. I love that. I feel like <laughs> all artists should do that is just take an old piece of art and literally re do it. I, I'm so curious on to 
how the process is and how for you it feels different. You know, when you first do a, a piece to to when you do it the, the second go around by recreating it, like what, even in your body and in, in your spirit, how do you feel with doing it? You know, like, are you more confident? Are you, do you know now yeah. what you want to do more? The biggest difference for me is, is that I, I, I can do things faster than I could do them before. Um, and it's a really good reminder because I'm not perfect. I am not, I'm not by any means a master yet at my craft. I have lots of growth I can still do. Um, but I can notice that like sketching the face and getting the depth and perspective of the face was much easier now than it had been in the, I, I really belabored that face. Like it was really difficult for me in when I did the first one. Um, so it's just, it's just a lot smoother. I have a lot more freedom. <laughs> I love that. Yes. So, so if you're, you. if, if, mm -hmm. if you or anyone else is suffering, trying to accomplish something and it feels like trying to like walk through mud, like just remember that it won't always be that way. Right. Right. Wow. Okay. So I see you're adding some clothing onto her is what I'm seeing right now. Some kind of medieval clothing thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. Just, you know, maybe like a, an overdress and like a white undershirt thing. Um, just some layers. Um, and I'll probably put some texture in it. Um, and then try to keep it fairly simple. Um, let's get her some hair as well. Yay. Um, I love when people work on hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You are, you are so inspiring to me because you actually like love doing hair. I need to practice. I need to get that love. Like hair is so I, okay. I went really hard on the hair on this original. Look yes. At this. Look at this hair. Wow. I know the detail is like impeccable. I, I went to DeviantArt and I like looked up a tutorial and the tutorial told you a method where you would like layer in, start from a big thick brush, then add like a slightly less thick brush and yeah. slightly less thick brush and you go lighter and lighter. And at the very end, you put in the like one pixel strands to make it look really good. Mm -hmm. And I think my, I am not satisfied with what I accomplished. I think I could have tried a little bit harder. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I couldn't have, but I'm going to show you when I, when I paint this hair, what, um, what my different approach will be. I, I it will not be perfect because like I said, hair is sort of like become an afterthought for me in many cases. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But, but I, I mean, I can do hair. I can, I can do a little hair every now and then it's just, uh, it's something I would like to improve on. Hair and clothes are things that I'd like to improve on. Gotcha. So that leaves me like, I would love to open that up to, to everyone in the chat. As an artist, is there something that you, you're just like, I would love to improve on this. It can be hands, it can be feet, it can be hair, it can be facial expressions, uh, clothing. Please comment in the chat, let us know are we the only ones who, who, who need to work on something? I bet are, the answer is no. <laughs> I, I bet you. Oh my gosh. I guarantee you it's not. Sam said hair and clothes are my weakness too. Sam. Love, <laughs> Sam, we need to study group. <laughs> uh, we need to go to school. <laughs> I love it. Nerve said core anatomy skills. Very true. Yeah. Very yeah. true. I think for me, it's definitely the hands and the feet. Oh, it's like, keep trying. Oh, keep I trying. Know. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. Oh, oh, it's, Lord. It's okay. Hands have accidentally become one of my favorite things. Like if I have a painting where I have to do like 
more than two people's worth of hands. I'm like, yes, this is great. Wow. Uh (laughs) I never hear that. (laughs) You are like a unicorn. (laughs) Oh, it's you just try things and then you discover some things are just so satisfying if you can if you can figure it out, you know, like if you can get the hang of it. Right, right. Oh, wow. Sam said, I'm focusing on hair right now for a personal project and I'm hoping I come out of it improved. I hope so too, Sam. I know you can do it. You're such a beautiful artist. I know. I know. You're right. Sam can definitely do it. Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I'm going to try and combine these um and let's just uh let's just play around with some i think i might try multiply but i'm gonna i'm gonna use my favorite tools in photoshop um that is the the color um modification tools Mm -hmm. um let's see I have the window. It has opened up oh, on a different monitor. So sneaky. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm on the line art. I've set the line art to multiply um, because I want it to eventually disappear. Um, but I want to make it more of a skin color. So I'm going towards the red tone. Um, and that's actually almost just what I want. I think Wow. Um, I could maybe lighten it just a tiny bit. Um, but I think that color will harmonize with the piece pretty nicely. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to start painting on top. Wow. I can already see like the difference in um, your new sketch and your old one. It's it's so detailed and there's so much depth to it. Um, it looks beautiful. Thank you. We have one problem we need to fix, which is like, if you watch the location of my color, um, Mm -hmm. as I, as I go around with my color picker on this, like we're almost exclusively in the grays and our darkest tone is 50%. And most of it is like really close to white. Like there's, there's no range here. So I'm going to pull us into some saturation. I'm going to pull us down. And I'm going to just start adding something that's not just pure white in. Um, gotcha. Now, and... how how are you finding that color that kind of gives um, skin tone? That yeah. is a good that is that is a good question. Skin tones are so there's so many different colors that you can use for skin tones. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so much variance. Um, even, even on the same person with the same skin, um, just different lighting, different times of day. Like there's so, so freaking much. Um, basically the answer is not an amazing one, but it's lots of practice. I've done a lot where I've, I've gone in and I've done a base render of a face with the values that I want. And then I noticed that the, the tones are not actually giving life like mm. life like skin needs certain saturations in certain places it right. seems, needs a certain amount of light and dark in different places and um so i have used a lot i have abused the you know hue saturation replace color levels i love levels um yes. selective color those tools are my arsenal um yes and then basically just trial and error trying to fix something that doesn't look right over and over again has worked really well for me. Mm. And so now I can I can I can somewhat confidently get a little bit close. You know, I picked this color, this color is probably fine, but I bout I doubt I will be totally happy with it by the time I'm done. I will probably need to make some changes. Wow. Yeah, I find um, being artist, being an artist, um, when you're wanting to make things as realistic as they can, or certain things, right? So skin tone, you clearly may not want to make them green if you're trying to, you know, create maybe. something realistic. Maybe if you want that 
if you're trying to create like a realistic, I guess, human being, you're trying to get, you know, close to some skin tone. Yeah. And so that can be so tricky. Um, and so I love hearing different artists takes on or tips on how to really get close to a realistic human skin tone. Mm hmm. Well, remember, remember that there's, you know, yellows and reds and blues in everyone's face. Um, pay attention to where the hard edges are and where the soft edges are. Um, like what, what tones are the ones that have like, um, there's like a really sharp edge and you can see the defined section of it. So like, is it the really high key tones that have a sharp edge around them? Like the, the specular highlights or is it the shadows that have a, 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 a strong edge around them? Um, that's not so helpful in choosing the correct color, but it will make the colors you choose seem right more, even if they're less accurate. Right. Well, she is looking like a little bit uh, wild right now, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's all a part of the process. <laughs> I know, just, you have to just trust, okay? <laughs> Just trust. Oh my gosh. Um, I want like also kind of a warm, creamy color for like some sort of, this is going to be some sort of white shirt, like a linen shirt. Mm -hmm. I keep, keep accidentally hitting the, the key with my thumb. So that's the menu that keeps coming up. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. oh, you know, hashtag just digital artist problems. I know. Oh my gosh. And there is, oh, digital artist problems are so funny because <laughs> they're, they're so easy to correct. Uh, so, this okay. So, so different. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is I'm choosing like an orangish brownish hue for her outfit because there is, um, in the story I imagined, there is um, kind of an environmental theme um, and in the beginning, the whole world is like not, the environment is not doing great. Um, mm. Things are kind of dead and dying. Mm -hmm. And so I want, like, if it was the beginning of an actual story and I was designing a character to fit into the beginning of that story, I would want the color palettes represented to be more, less lush, more dead, more, more, um, like, Muted you know, and... yeah, with room room in the story for the color palette to change as the world sort of heals or whatever might happen mm. in the story. So, gotcha. so, so normally I would think about her having some sort of green color um, because, um, you know, she is associated with like nature magic and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But but at the beginning of the story, uh, I think having a, a contrast to that is an interesting concept. Yeah, for sure. Like those browns and tans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I okay. love that concept. What do you think? <laughs> love it. I think it's looking great. No, really. <laughs> like I, I just see so much depth in the face and I, I think it's awesome. Well, thank you. Oh my I think gosh. painting over some of those elements that were uh, taking away a little bit, like the eyes, I think that makes a big difference. And then just uh, blocking in colors under a sketch is really like one of my favorite things to do because immediately it starts looking like uh, something real, you know? Right. I'm telling you, there's something about adding colors that really can bring it to life. Mm -hmm. And that is what is being done, especially when you add just the different shadows and, you know, um, being able to to do the shadow with the highlights um, that really just adds like a punch of depth to to what you create. Yeah, yeah. Light and shadow. This is why I became a painter. I was just obsessed with light and shadow. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, because it literally it turns lines I think into just something that you feel you can actually 
touch or pick up um mm-hmm. even though it may just be on a sketch pad and you know yeah. or digital or on a canvas you know yeah that illusion is magic magic <laughs> so do you now that you are um fully into or not fully but mainly into digital art do you still paint? Do you still sketch on paper? What is that journey for you? I, um, in like 2015, I sold all my painting supplies. Uh, well, I gave them away to another artist. Um, and so I have some like, I have some like gouaches that I've wanted to experiment with. And um, I have like, you can see I have an easel behind me. Um, and, but I don't, I don't, regretfully I don't use it nearly as much as I wish I did Mm -hmm. um so that's something it's almost like doing traditional art is almost like a vacation from digital art um because uh you can have such a high level of perfectionism with digital art that it it can be a difficult mindset to have like you can zoom in infinitely so how do you know when to stop um yeah well you try not to zoom in (laughs) <laughs> if anyone's struggling with that, try not to zoom in. It will help you. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so I think it would be cool to do more traditional art. I would like to. I have a sketchbook. I don't I don't use it very often at all. Um, I sketch digitally primarily. Um, and I love it. I mean, I love digital art. So same, uh, same. I don't think there's anything wrong with with doing only digital. Um, unless you're struggling with, you know, the zoom. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) No, same. I, I agree with it. I love definitely both. Um, but you know, there are the pros and cons of, of everything, but I definitely love digital art because I think you're able to, you know, make the mistakes and go back and, (laughs) and change them. (laughs) if, If you make a mistake, Um, and so that's definitely a pro, but I, I, I do miss, um, sometimes just simply if the, if it's a mistake, it's a mistake and that's just going to make, you know, the, the painting or the sketch on paper, you know, special in that way. So, but I'm like you though, I, I really do enjoy digital art. It's so therapeutic. You, You just hit something that's really important, I think, which is, um, like embracing mistakes Mm -hmm. um my like unofficial slogan i guess maybe it's actually kind of my official slogan is um every mistake is just a chance to do a little better next time so i really yeah i really want to fight the urges of perfectionism as an artist and i really want to embrace those mistakes and so i love what you said about it i think that is quite profound Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's honestly true. Um, but I know for digital art, sometimes you can feel like, oh, I hate that. <laughs> You're like, backspace. <laughs> uh-huh. Undo. And then, and then and then you save it in a file somewhere in a PSD and you don't <laughs> save a, a, a JPEG of it or anything. So you can never see it when you're browsing your files. You forget right. that it existed. You just put so much of your work that you didn't like into, into the abyss unintentionally you know I'm telling you you really do okay Mm -hmm. I see that you've added some more to the hair so what's happening with that yeah so I did the the basic outline of what I wanted the hair to be um and I basically what I what I'm doing right now is a background layer because I wanted to go in and do a quick quick and dirty adjustment to the background but I didn't want to I'm actually painting on top of the original art. So like if I turn it off, you'll see I'm relying on the original art as part of what I'm doing. Right. So I didn't want to, this background layer is above the original art. So I created this um, really rough um, layer mask. So I can, I can do anything, you know, I can paint like this, but it won't Mm -hmm. affect the area there. So I can, I can be free there. Um, the hair is just a basic block in. I think her forehead is uh, not quite cor- correct right now, but I'm trying to move quickly through the different areas of the painting right. to to um, 
to bring it together holistically instead of like perfecting one small part. Which right. Is what I, that's what I did with the original one, you know, and that was not great for me to, to like hyper focus on one thing like that. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. so I'm just grabbing a soft brush and I'm just going to get some, some less stark values started in here, but I am going to keep the spirit of this background. Yeah, um, I love it. It's very forest. Yeah. Yeah. I that's know. the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how you kind of touch on your process of um, how before, when you first created um, this piece of art, you were super focused on like, okay, I'm just doing hair. I'm just doing the body. I'm just doing yeah. the skin. I'm just doing the clothes. But now you are more in that multitasking, um, kind of trying to just do all things at once so that you, how do, what, what does that do in, in your journey for that? It helps a lot because I can, um, at any step, if I've uh, touched everything equally, I could stop. And um, it helps with the attempting to reach, like, instead of reaching 100% perfect, you try to reach 70% perfect. Um, there's a really great video on YouTube by Struthless, and he talks about this idea of just, just searching for 70% and calling that good. Um, mm. It's like J Jake Parker says, finished, not perfect. So if you're bringing everything forward together, it really helps with that. Mm, I love that. So many like tips you are dropping Stevie today. <laughs> I I'm here know. to help. <laughs> I like, is the chat picking it up? Because you are dropping super like great, great, great artist tips for sure. Oh, thank you. Yes. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a group for my background and I'm going to name it because it should be named. I'm going to put this mask that I made on the group. And that mm -hmm. means I'll be able to do multiple different layers of work in this area. Yeah. Um, and it, it won't, I won't have to degrade one of them so I can still mess with these soft colors if I want to. Right. Um, and I can just sort of, um, I can have more control basically. Right. So at this point, are you creating a new um, background? Kind of, kind okay. of. Um, that's a fair, that's a fair way to, to look at it. I'm, I'm going to add some trees into the background so mm -hmm. that it looks like instead of just branches, they're actual trees. Um, and they, really don't have to be perfect. We can just do some Bob Ross here, you know? Oh, um. <laughs> I love Bob Ross. <laughs> Were you I a mean, fan as well? I feel like oh, I'm who, a fan of him. Yeah, no, who doesn't love Bob Ross? He's he's a gift. He's a gift to art and yes. to people. <laughs> yeah, no, really, like, to people in general, I feel. Uh, like, there are people who I know who have not ever thought about drawing painting not anything like that but they honestly just loved um the spirit of him and and yes. what he created and honestly how simple he just made creating steam and yeah. I really love that it was like how, how we talked about earlier where when he would make a mistake it wasn't the end of the, the end of the world it was very yeah. much like okay how do we um bring this into the piece of art like how do we turn that mistake into something beautiful um and i love that about him yeah yeah i love that too it's it's really um it's the way to make art and not not have internal pain about it you know <laughs> <laughs> oh Sorry. my gosh no eternal yes we don't want the internal pain <laughs> exactly uh, a really cool little trick that I learned recently, which I have been loving, is uh, if you hold down the tilde button, that's the button above the tab button, mm -hmm. um, it will change, while you're holding it, it'll change your um, mode to clear. Oh, it doesn't show up, but basically it makes your brush, it's the same brush, but it erases instead of draws. 
Um, wow, and that's, I did not know that. Oh, it's really nice if you're just using one brush and you're trying to, you know, move quickly and you don't want to like switch to your eraser. You want the settings on your brush. Um, saves a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So I got some trees. That's interesting. I mean, that's fine. I think I'm going to need another layer of trees further back in the distance. And I want them to create be... that perspective. Yeah, exactly. And like, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to set both of these layers to darken, which what that does is if I have a lighter color here, it will disappear into the shadows, which is just what I want for now. And uh, I'll just do some like maybe just slightly less thick trees in the background. I can even copy these trees I've done and maybe I'll do that for a quick, you know, time saving um, approach. Definitely. This is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff that if you're doing concept art, um, you want to do, you want to think about like, how do I make one thing and then reuse it as much as possible to keep things going quickly. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, a totally different thought process than the perfectionism of illustration. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. I'm always thinking, how can I copy and paste? <laughs> from <laughs> what I created here to <laughs> what I need to create in this new thing. No, I think that's very, you are dropping some major like Photoshop tips, honestly. I love Photoshop. So any way that I can help other people, I I'm here for it because, <laughs> oh, I just flipped the wrong way. <laughs> I flipped, here's, here's, I can't, I can't speak and think apparently. I flipped it vertically. Okay. Now, um, when did you um, start drawing in Photoshop? Um, my first Photoshop was Photoshop 7, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like early 2000s. I had a Wacom tablet um, that I received as a gift as a kid. And it was so old that it had a serial port, not a USB port. Wow. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me Ooh. about it. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It had a separate power source and a serial port. So Wow. So you've been, you've been rolling with Photoshop for, for a while. I have, um, I have a bit, um, I did have a big gap. So I used that one for a while and then I had a, uh, I like stopped doing art. I actually had a couple seasons where I stopped doing art completely. Um, I was a student in university and I, um, I think it was like from maybe like, I could have been like eight years that I didn't do art. So, um, wow. if anybody feels like they gave up or they don't have time or something like, yeah, it's never too late exactly to jump back in and just start sketching away yeah exactly so wow were you still kind of like sketching or doodling you know a little on random pieces of paper okay so yeah. you're still kind of using the skill but not yeah mostly just because like if i was in a class and i was bored i would doodle in my in my um in my notebook um, which helped me focus because I'm a kinesthetic learner. So a little bit here and there, but nothing, nothing really focused, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to leave the background here for now. Um, I might just slightly make the back layer a little bit less opaque. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I think I'll stop with this for the, the time being. Um, and then I'll try to work on the, 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 the skin and the hair a little bit because I think if we can get a little bit of detail in the face the whole piece is going to start to really feel like it's coming together right um so I'm just lightening the mid-level trees a tiny bit first wow and it just creates that that great perspective that we all yeah love. Yeah. yeah, that atmospheric perspective yes we all love it this one <laughs> yes if only all perspective were as easy as I atmospheric know. perspective. I'm... No, you are not lying. You are not lying. 
<laughs> I'm begging the, the universe, please. <laughs> Could it be oh. easy like this? I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. It looks great though. Thank you. It looks great. Okay. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going on top of the line art that I've made. Okay. Um, let me, let me fill in this little white spot on her hair. Cause that's bothering me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, just get these outlines sort of from the mask that I made, get those kind of filled in and, uh, okay. And then, uh, since I'm here, we can give her some hairline here. Um, and I think that will help a lot with the feeling of her large forehead. <laughs> <laughs> no problem with large foreheads. Uh, I, right. I have, I have, I have tons of affection for large foreheads as a, as a haver <laughs> of a large forehead myself. <laughs> uh, uh, and then I'm going to tweak the colors again for the line mm -hmm. art because I, I want them to really um, complement a shadow tone in the skin. But what mm -hmm. I'm trying, so I would do much more saturated skin as I, as I work now, but I want to kind of keep the spirit of this original piece. Right. So I'm going to try and desaturate it a little bit more than I normally would. Okay. Gotcha. I love how you keep, um, your lines. I'm like a, the type of art that I create. I love just having a focus on the line work. Um, mm -hmm. and so I love when I can find another artist who, who also likes a strong line. Just wait, they're going to go away. They're <laughs> going to go away soon. I soon. know, but at, le at least in the, in the sketching, some people don't, you know, some artists don't even use lines in, in that yeah. way either. They just kind of go in with the color, which is cool too. I almost feel like when I desaturate it all the way to like a purple or gray, that it 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 gets the tone that I want a little bit more. So that's sort of telling me that I think I need to go desaturated more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to I'm going to have to be very gentle with my shadows if we're desaturated like this, because it could make her look dead. Right. Um, <laughs> but we're going to experiment with these and, and and see what we can gather from them. Uh, right. I'm going to let them guide me is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and let's just, let's just see. I am anticipating I'll probably need to use my, my trusty color adjustment tools, um, later. So. And play around with it and. Exactly. See what looks best. Yep. <laughs> I'm just pulling myself. I, I have like a. I have a pure ref file on the side and on it, I have like clothes and hair references and background references. So in the distance, I'm just reorienting, reorienting myself to the face reference so that I can see a little bit of help on the side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now, now I'm going to really block in the big chunks of shadow. Now I can tell you, let's make a palette for ourselves. Like we did is as a youth. As we do, as we did with the original version. Yes. Um, I can tell you this shadow here is not dark enough. And I think this color is not the right color. Mm -hmm. It's either too dark or too desaturated. I don't actually fully know what's wrong with it. Um, cause I'm still learning, but mm -hmm. we're going to experiment with some shadow colors under the eye. And I'm going to see if we can find something that could be okay. Yeah. Let's try. Let's try it. I feel like that's the great thing about um, digital art is there's um, a, a bigger push in or more freedom in experimenting because of yeah. course you can just <laughs> undo it. Uh, and so, but I, I love that because you're able to test out new things and, and maybe learn something new and um and go from there yes yeah experimentation is the name of the game yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely okay so it looks like it's really strong but i think if we keep going i think if we keep pushing it it might actually be good mm -hmm. um so i'm just gonna try let's see what we can do 
Um, and then a bunch of what I'm doing with her face comes from like a knowledge uh, experience with anatomy uh, practice. So like I, I have a, a lot of practice with like the structure of the face and the bones um, and the different planes. Um, so I know which, which faces like faces. Let me clarify which <laughs> planes on the right. face point up or to the side or whatnot. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is something anyone can learn from practice. Mm -hmm. And I do happen to know there's a couple key places where you need your darkest colors, darker mm -hmm. than what we currently have. And mm -hmm. those are like in the nostrils, um, the irises and the corners of the mouth. Um, so I'll, I'll continue, co continually come back to those and try to make sure they're dark enough. Mm. Now for someone who, um, is new to the shadowing and the highlight world, um, what's some advice you would give them, uh, as far as learning how to, uh, pinpoint where to put those dark areas and those lighter areas? If you can give yourself the challenge of looking at a reference image, um, kind of like what I'm doing, and you just chunk it down into really large areas of light and dark. And you you notice, you look at, like set yourself up with the color wheel in Photoshop and notice how close to the white or how close to the black your value is and make sure that your range is large. Cause that was one of the big problems with my original picture is that the range was so tiny. And and you'll notice even right now, as I'm adding darker colors in, she is starting to look really ghostly. <laughs> it's because the colors were way, way, uh, she was like a piece of paper, basically. <laughs> <laughs> she was not, not very human looking. And so I want to, I'm actually going to, use a radial gradient that's like 33% opaque. So it's very, very opaque. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just gonna actually like select her forehead and I'm just gonna try to throw some gradients in here. Once you get oh, wow. the hang, nice. once you get the hang of the planes, like you were talking about, like learning which planes are where and what, what parts are light and dark, mm -hmm. the next step is to put in gradients like this and it will, it will make things feel really uh, alive. Um, anything that could be a flat color, if you can introduce some sort of gradation in it, in the color, it will just add so much to your art. Wow. Look at it. It's really coming alive. I, I am, I am ranting at this point. I hope that is okay. I am having no, so much fun talking about this. That is okay. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, I love it. I was going to say, it's like what I did with that gradient. I actually just gave myself a whole new range of colors that I can now sample from. Exactly. For, for the different areas of her face. Exactly. That was my other question for you, for, for people who are, again, new to... Um, this world of art and and uh creating art similar to this where the skin tones are realistic mm -hmm. um what advice would you give them on how to determine the color that they're using um so there's different tricks you can use to help yourself um something that I think is a good like learning process is trying to sample colors out of another image because it's actually very challenging to sample colors and, and, and achieve the same effect. So practicing sampling colors and blending them and then trying to capture the same effect as a reference picture that will actually help you grow quite a bit. Um, and uh, another activity that you'd like to, to, practice or a skill that you'd like to practice is your ability to like see a color and then choose the color from your color picker. So you could mm. get any image anywhere and you can like pick a small part of it and say, okay, I'm going to go sample that color. Mm -hmm. and, like I'm going to go to my color wheel and I'm going to try and pick the corresponding color. And then you paint it on top of that image and see if you got the right color and you can start to learn 
some of the um, biases that your eyes have and you can, can start to improve your ability to choose colors. Mm, that's good advice. Color, color is a lifelong, lifelong passion. Like you can just, just play, just play with color and, um, and don't, don't judge yourself too harshly if you don't get it right. Yeah. Because maybe it is right for the piece you made, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with that for sure. I know um, I, as well, creating brown skin and you're definitely having to play around with it and, and see like, mm -hmm. okay, does this fit um, what I'm trying to create? And yeah, just playing around in the color wheel yeah. will definitely help too. Do you have to try multiple times? Like, is it difficult to get the colors you want? You know, at this point now, I think I have like my go-tos. I think we all like have like, okay, these are the go-to swatches. Um, yeah. But and other than that, um, sometimes it can be because you don't want it to be too red, too orange. Mm -hmm. um, and so just playing around with that. But I think at a certain point, you know, if you are doing certain skin tones. Um, so example, I do a lot of brown skin tones. Yeah. Um, you are going to want to stick within that yellow to red area yeah. um, of the color wheel. And so naturally, like, and usually more on the medium to darker end of that. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think as you gradually do it, you learn like, okay, I just... I know to stick to this area. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always curious to know uh, what other artists are doing out there as far as uh, picking skin tone for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell you like, it's definitely like a, a small area in the, in between yellow and red, but actually sometimes all the way over to purple um, because yeah. you can go to like this sort of desaturated place. Yeah. The challenge for me is, is like a color, you might want a color in here that looks like it's kind of purplish, but what it might really be is like a desaturated version of another color. Um, mm. So I think that, that there's like some finesse in getting the right, the right version of the color. Um, but, and then there's also like, especially with like black skin tones, there's like the different um, uh, like you can have the ranges of like purple or the ranges of like red or blue. Yeah. Yes. It's like, oh, Very deep. it's like, yeah, I know. So um, I feel like there is so many different hues that you can have and they're all like, they're just all so awesome. Like they're all so different and you can just have them like even next to each other, like different people with different skin tones. And I don't know. Yes. I so know. I have a lot there's of admiration so for that. Yeah same there's so much that you can do now for you you do um a lot of different things within your art and um I know it can of course lean on the side of that fantasy um yeah. so do you create um some characters of course that have out of this world um <laughs> complexion skin complexions like the pinks and the purples and the greens um i i want to do more of that i want to okay. do like more expressive less realistic more like um uh like emotive kind of art and i find that the use of like really like strange neon colors um where you don't expect them in like skin tones and stuff is something I'm really interested in. So I like love it when people do that. Um, and so, so that's something I would like to do more of. Awesome. But no, the answer is no, I don't do enough of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something that you're wanting to do more of. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. for sure. I can definitely see you doing like some really cool just different colors for the skin tones with your art because your art already brings a level of just like this really cool I think fantasy sci-fi like it, it has like a lot of different blends together and so I could see you doing something like that thank you that sounds like a great idea I'm on board 
Yes. I am so on board. <laughs> yes. You have to come back to Adobe Live and, and, and do one for us. <laughs> it will do a session only on experimenting with skin. We'll, yeah. do, we'll do we'll do some wild wild emotive neon green neon purple yes. skins oh my god i love it i'm here for this <laughs> i am too i'm here for it too <laughs> so oh, right wow now, right now i am not looking at my reference very much at all mm. um which is um it is a that's a contentious topic in the art world about whether or not reference is cheating. Like there's a lot of people on the internet who have said things like, oh, you know, you, you, if you're, if you can only paint from reference, you're not a real artist, like all sorts of like really right. toxic things, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot out there. It, yeah. It's unfortunate, but um, obviously you guys can probably tell by the fact that I'm using reference that I am 100% in favor of people using reference. If you don't know how to draw something, you have to learn by looking at something. And if you want to do realism, you're going to have to look at something, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I definitely agree on that. And even if it's just like the simple thing of sometimes I'll like take a picture of me or like my face, my hands, my... Yes my you know my feet and i'll even have to go off of off of that and like you said i mean that to me is the one of the best ways to learn and so yeah. that your body kind of has an understanding of like okay this is how that shape goes and this is how it feels creating that shape yeah well, i agree with you for sure yeah that's a good point like how does it feel to draw this thing you right know? Mm -hmm. that's that it's so much is muscle memory and we forget about that. We really do. We really do. I'm telling you. So it, it helps, I think, to to have something to, you know, look at and kind yes. of, you know, go off of. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, mm -hmm. and there's a really powerful skill of being able to create your own reference. Like if you look at um, like Magic the Gathering painters, I guarantee you that a bunch of them actually have a lot of photography knowledge and they photograph their own reference or sometimes they sculpt something and then they photograph it. Like um, the professional people out there are going to blow you away with their like unrelated skills that they use to make their art. So true. Wow. So some I see the definition. It's really looking great Stevie. thank you thank you yes so, something i notice is i think her cheek is a little bit flat so i'm gonna try and bring some um anatomy in mm -hmm. some musculature some sense of a cheekbone here yes i see it <laughs> i love a good I cheekbone <laughs> oh don't get me started okay. i am i'm team cheek <laughs> cheekbones they're my favorite favorite yes. to draw yes I love a cheekbone um, um wow and you just really that was so quick for what how you just created the cheek it, like I feel like you created it within like one second <laughs> if you can do something with one brush stroke that is magic that's that's the artistic dream to, to get yes. to the level where you can do that was a little bit more than one brush stroke, but still it's like that, that's something I really actively try to work on myself is, is, um, economy of brush strokes and getting as much done as I can with mm -hmm. as little noodling. Um, she's looking mighty pasty to me. She's looking mm. that thing I was talking about, about her looking kind of dead, right? That, that I knew it was going to be a problem. And I think I want to address it. I'm going to do a little bit more value addition and then I'm going to, then I'm going to tinker with colors. We love to tinker with colors. I know it's, it's actually my favorite thing um, <laughs> to show people because I think um, I actually can't live without it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, uh, it, I want everyone to have the ability. I want everyone to have the power. I the, love that. The skill. Yay. By the, by the way, I'm curious, is anyone else repainting an old or redrawing an old piece of artwork today? Yes. Um, drop your answers of that in the in the chat. We'd love to know. Yes. Are you recreating an art piece that you've done before and you're wanting to just redo it again? Please let yeah. us know. Benchmarking your skills. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you that I think that's a great way of like seeing the growth that that, you know, not only from your art skills, but I think from um, the confidence piece, too, because sometimes you can create something and you're not as confident when you first created it. But I think the second go around when you create it, you feel more confident in your skills and the direction that you're wanting to go into. And so, yes, yeah. um, there's a lot of growth that comes with redoing a second piece of art. I mean, uh, yes. creating uh, an old piece of art. Yeah, I think yes. so too. And, 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 and a little bit of a self-esteem boost usually as well. Yes, because most likely you have grown in your skills. So you're like, okay, yeah. I feel better about what I'm creating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, if you are just joining the chat, um, we are here with Stevie Ray Drawn. Uh, she has taken an older piece of art that she's done and she's redrawing it for us here on Adobe Live. Um, so definitely say hi. Let us know you're here. Um, and have fun with us. Yes. And if you've done a redraw, but it's not something you did today, I would still be so interested to see that. Even yes, just some people in the chat. Some people have like two years apart. They've done the same thing. Um, and it is amazing to see. Have you ever done a redraw, Justine? I actually have. Um, I I do it quite a bit just because I'm always um, just curious on like, okay, I've recently learned that I like how I do this skin tone. And so I'm always trying to recreate it for, for the art pieces that I really loved or, or did back then. I'm always wanting to recreate them. And mm -hmm. so um, I love doing a, a a redrawn or recreating an older piece, especially um, when I learn new skills, I'm wanting to like test it out on the old. Yes. Yes. You know, you're wanting to, you know, you're like, man, I felt really good doing that old piece, but I feel like I could really elevate it if mm -hmm. I just tried it again. And so I love recreating. So when you said you were recreating, I was like, oh, yay. yay. <laughs> Especially when it's a piece that other people really loved. Like if you posted it online and like people really responded well to it, to be able to like show that same piece again later, be like, here's the fabled, you know, whatever it was. And, right. And, and we've done her again. <laughs> right. She's back again. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, I think people love it, though, because, I mean, they're following you. So they love your art and they love to see, like, your growth in, yeah. in you as an artist. And so um, I think they love it for sure. Like, when you post this, I think um, people are going to not only remember the piece that you created, but just be amazed at how you've grown from when you posted it the first time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I lost some of the definition in my piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually bringing my line art back and putting it on top so that I can see what my definition was. So you can see if I toggle it on and off, like, yeah, there's just some uh, crisp as I was, as I was noodling, I think I just lost some important bits in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the opposite of one brush stroke fixing the problem. It's like you just keep doodling, you keep messing around with it. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do before. I'm actually going to stop noodling. I say, as I continue to noodle, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop in like two seconds here. I promise. 
and we're going to we're going to do color adjustments to see if I can share some of those tricks. Oh, um, love it. I think this is good enough. Um I'm just thinking the 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 neck and the chest are two different directions. This is something I've recently sort of realized in my work. Mm, so if okay. the neck if the neck is in shadow, the chest will be in light. Or if the chest is in shadow, the neck will be in light normally. Right. Um, so there's usually a division right here at the collarbone where it goes from either light to dark or dark to light. And in this reference picture, her neck is mostly dark. And so we can take this opportunity to make her chest a bit lighter. Yeah. That'll give that sense of the um the change in uh in angles. Okay, I'm gonna stop noodling. We're gonna put the pen down and we're gonna go. That was a good noodle though. <laughs> I could noodle forever. I could noodle for hours. I hate to yeah. imagine how much I'm gonna noodle as soon as we're done here. <laughs> I know, you're just gonna continue on. <laughs> I know. I'm definitely going to polish this up after the stream is over and post it. So if anyone wants to see what the like final version looks like, I will put it on my Instagram. Um, Thanks, do. So image adjustments. My favorites are um, hue saturation is always good, but I find that it's a bit one dimensional because it changes all the colors mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. Um Color balance, no, I don't use that too much, but I know a lot of people do. Um, uh, levels, I almost missed levels. I use a ton. I love levels, mm -hmm. um, especially when you go into not just the main levels, but um, if you, all my windows are ho hopping up on the other screen. Okay, <laughs> if you go in the channel, you can change it to these different like red, green, blue. And right. if you learn what the different, different um, knobs do you can have a lot of control over like even just what I did right there made her look a lot less dead because it, it made did. her a lot a lot pinker you know right so um or you can remove saturation in the highlights yeah or you so there's can the green that we were talking about <laughs> yep <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so um yeah so like she was looking pretty ghostly so we'll We'll give her a tiny bit of red and then the whole image has like a gray purple kind of feel. So I kind of want to try to bring some blue in, mm. but you have to be really careful with blue because it, it overpowers really, really easily. Mm -hmm. Um, So now that even just this adjustment has made her look a lot more alive. Definitely. Now I, now I might go to my levels and like, mess with my saturation a bit mm -hmm. to to make it look like an overexposed image which is kind of what the original one looked like um so i can i can lighten it up a bit ah uh, i just don't want to i'm just not feeling it you know yeah i think that this this repaint may just have to be very different because of how much I have changed as an artist, you know? Yeah. If I want to, if I want to fix those fundamentals, I, I kind of have to change the image. Exactly. Um, well, just quick toggle back and forth. You can see the difference. Wow. I may have even pushed it a little bit too far into those purple tones. Wow. Um, that is a, a big difference though. It is so powerful. Let me show you some more of the tools that I like to use. Yes, um, please do. So say like I want to really isolate the shadows or isolate a certain range in the skin tone and change it in tone. Mm -hmm. um, I think the um, match color and selective color are both good ways to do that. With match color, you go in and you will eye drop a certain color. So maybe I want to change the mid tones of her skin. And I have to figure out where the window went. It's hiding. Don't you hate that? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's oh. here. I found it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, there it goes. 
Um, oh, I chose match color, but I did not want to choose match color. I wanted to choose replace color. So we'll grab the midtone and I will find my window again. Okay, here we go. Um, and you can get kind of a representation of like what you have um, selected. And I have the fuzziness turned up. So I'm gonna turn my fuzziness down because I just want like this middle tone of her skin. Um, and then I have a hue saturation and lightness slider and I can change those midtones. And you can do some wow. pretty wild things, you know? Wow. And, you know. Wow, yeah. Totally destroy the values, but even just like slight shifts. So this is where it was originally. Right. Just slightly changing it lighter or darker. We'll adjust what we have. I think I'm okay with the values of the original painting, but I think, I think the hue is what might need to change. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is where the practice comes in. Like I've done this with so many different ones. I've made so many different changes and you never are totally sure what feels right until you, you find it. And sometimes you're still not even sure what is right. But if you can do the experimentation, you can learn a lot about how to really capture good skin tone. Um, so I made I her skin in the mid tone. I made it more yellow, um, just a tiny bit, but it makes a big difference, I think. Yeah. And then here's before either of the adjustments. Wow. Wow. I'm pretty satisfied yeah. with that. Yeah, that definitely brought like more life to it for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um mm. trying to think if there's any main magical thing I can do in the last couple moments here. Um, let's give her some highlights in her eyes. Highlights are if you want a character to have life, highlights are the only thing you need. I'm telling you, that will really do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will really do it. Just, it's beautiful. Just, yeah. And then all of a sudden she's an actual person. I'm <laughs> telling you, just the little slightest will really. Wow. Now I see you have a lot of layers, CV over there. Mm -hmm. um, how many layers do you think you normally have when creating uh, one piece of art? I have had files with like hundreds of layers before. <laughs> um, so, you know, I might not be the best role model. <laughs> I, and, and okay, like everything is the big picture, right? Like, right. like I have a, a perfection leaning style realism seeks perfection so i have this workflow that involves um i'll even show you like i have her hair on a layer mm -hmm. i have I have her skin on a layer um i have you know her shirt on a layer i have her other shirt on a layer and when i have those then i can lock the transparency and i can layer in shading on top of them so i get the silhouette perfect and then i um and then I add shading onto it there. Um, I will say that that workflow is a little bit rigid uh, mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so in this one, I actually was painting a lot of stuff on one layer. And I think there's a lot of value in both workflows. One where you try to have just one or two layers and you're constantly merging them together. Right. Then you're really painting like you're on a canvas um, or um, having lots of layers and having all your different elements locked out with their silhouettes, you can modify them and move them around. They're both great. Wow. That is so fascinating. <laughs> How do you work? Um, I'm probably very similar to you. Um, I have a lot of layers as well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just because I, if I want to change um, 
little things, little elements, I want to be able to freely do it without having to get rid of all of my work. Yeah. Um, so when I create hair for skin, I also do the highlight in shadows. And so, yeah, yeah, you know, you want to have like those layers just in case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how I work. So I saw all your layers and I was like, okay. <laughs> Kindred spirit she's, she's here. She's my type of girl. Yeah, she's my type of girl. She's my type of girl. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> but oh. we are wrapping up. It looks so good, CV. Oh my god. Oh, gosh. thank you so much. This was it a lot of fun. So it looks so great. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you had a great time watching CV recreate her piece of art. Thank you so much, Stevie, for joining us. Thank you, Justine. And thank you everyone who hung out in chat. Bye.